With all the talk about Russia and its efforts to spread misinformation in the West, it remains sort of stunning that more aren't discussing the foreign propaganda tool that your kids are likely using. If you have teens, I'll bet a good number of them are checking or posting to TikTok multiple times a day. The app has nearly 100 million active users in the U.S., and two-thirds are between 12 and 17. And with all this talk of protecting our kids and even all the talk about reigning in Chinese influence, how is it that so few these days are talking about the fact that TikTok itself is owned by the Chinese? Chinese company called ByteDance, and the Chinese government is actively using it, grooming social media influencers on TikTok to spread pro-Chinese political narratives, deflect criticism of the country's human rights abuses, and promote other Beijing talking points. It seems like we've all but forgotten that two years ago, then-President Trump wanted to ban TikTok unless it found a U.S. buyer. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. We may be doing some other things or a couple of options, but a lot of things are happening. So we'll see what happens. But we are looking at a lot of alternatives with respect to TikTok. The ban essentially went nowhere after the company went to court to stall it. The Biden administration uh, avoided the issue last year, though the administration says it is working on new government oversight rules for foreign owned apps. Now, back then, the primary concern was about China getting access to American users' data. But now we can't ignore the propaganda piece. Because the Chinese government is not ignoring it. In fact, they're using it to influence the way American, particularly American kids, think. Take a look at this video about the Russian invasion of Ukraine posted by a reporter from Chinese state television. But she doesn't disclose her employer on her account. As much as I sympathize people in Ukraine, but I also see a dangerous trend because all the voices from Russia are being banned. And we know that RT Europe has been banned in Europe, RT America has been shut down. And anyone who point out the causes of, of NATO or US role in this conflict, or anyone who speaks slightly different from the Western mainstream media narrative will be attacked, will be accused as a Russian spy. I mean, this is dangerous. That's a Beijing effort to sow discord, talking points. Kids could be seeing it. Some of the content is much more subtle, like this influencer and Chinese state TV worker whose TikTok bio says, She's just sharing Chinese learning skills. Here she is explaining the Chinese word for sports, but only after a short message defending American skier Eileen Gu, who came under fire for competing and eventually winning gold for China at the Winter Olympics in Beijing this year. What she does is challenge herself, not politics. And because the Beijing Winter Olympics, everyone is falling in love with the winter sports in China, and where everyone go on the snow to try the skiing and the snowboard. Sports in Chinese is Ti Yu. Ti Yu. United is Huan Jie. Huan Jie. Ti Yu. Rang Ren Huan Jie. Sports United People Together. And it's not like we should be surprised. We were warned this was going to happen. CNBC article last year even spelled it out, quote, one set of risks is how the Chinese government could spread propaganda or influence the thinking of the Americans who use TikTok each month. This could be done through short length videos that the Chinese government may want to show to Americans, whether it be factual content or misinformation. The company could also choose to censor certain types of content. TikTok and its parent company, ByteDance, have said over and over again that they're insulated from any undue influence by the Chinese state government. Take that for what you will from a country where pretty much every industry, especially big tech, is closely scrutinized and regulated by the Communist Party and can be legally compelled to cooperate with intelligence officials. TikTok has said it's making efforts to separate its U.S. operations from China-based executives of its parent company. But that still hasn't fully happened. And a recent BuzzFeed article reported that, quote, interviews with 19 current and former TikTok employees show that ByteDance's control over TikTok is not merely structural employee accounts, is not merely structural. Employee accounts portray the company as sometimes so closely entwined that it's unclear where TikTok stops and ByteDance begins. Some workers described instances where senior leadership decisions were made by unknown actors in Beijing. 
10 employees who spoke to BuzzFeed News did not know the identities of the people that their managers or their managers' managers reported to. And that's pretty much exactly what employees told CNBC last year, that the boundaries between TikTok and its parent company are so blurry that they're virtually non-existent. So again, I just don't get why we've kind of forgotten about this and stopped talking about it. And I don't mean the BuzzFeeds and CNBCs who have, but why do so few seem to care anymore? We say we have to protect our kids from stranger danger. What are we doing about this? So many were talking recently about a Washington Post story this week that reported Facebook and its parent company Meta paid a public relations firm to orchestrate a national campaign to portray TikTok as a danger to American children. Fair enough, slimy tactics by a competitor. Glad they got called out. But bare knuckle corporate tactics aside, we should be talking about TikTok, at least because we have such limited information about how much China controls the app and its algorithms. We can see the way they've realized it's a perfect tool for spreading propaganda to users who, by virtue of their age, take in these videos likely without much critical thinking about it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.